Hey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Uh, my name is Silburn. Welcome to the late one. And um, hope you're well. Um, as you come on, <clears throat> say who you are, where you're from, what's your name, what's your number. <laughs> also, um, you know, share this video as well. Um, hey, Chris, Natalie, good evening. You know, one of the things, um, I Lorna, how are you? One of the things that I, I believe <clears throat> fundamentally is in um, the ultimate freedom of expression. I believe in the ultimate <clears throat> view that persons have that ultimate rights to their thoughts and their thinkings. Hi, Natalie. Good evening. Good evening. And today, hey Rupert, Rupert, how are you? Rupert, we have an engagement. Or uh, I think Rupert, we have a, a a date. I should say we we, we have a date where we're gonna have to talk about um, the latest with Jamaica. Um, you know, Rupert, I've I've heard that the the Secretary of State is coming to Jamaica soon. And as a result of that, um, and I believe the the commissioner of police is actually a, is resigning, Kuala. So we'll have to synchronize a date as to when we can actually have this discussion to sort of follow up on the latest in Jamaica in regards to the um, what should I say the state of emergency now if you can hear me clearly hey Yannick how are you you can hear me clearly yes <clears throat> because Rupert I I do support the Prime Minister actually I do support any sort of initiative in Jamaica which will somewhat address the the issue of crime you can hear me clearly yeah and clearly and and because it to, to, for it to address the issue of crime i think it is very important that we all support it and <clears throat> part of my french and and it is something that i have no qualms in um taking out the 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 politics out of it um uh, because sometimes people say there's that political element whereby persons somewhat won't support it because of political linkings. Now, the other thing that I was thinking as well is that um, it, it's, it, isn't it always interesting that whenever there is a... Um, a move or a thrust towards um, crime, we cannot seem to get that sort of collaborative effort. Um, collaborative effort, what should I say, with the um, the two parties coming together. You know, the two parties coming together should be very crucial, isn't it? You know, I think that that is um, crucial. <clears throat> so let's hope that will take place. But anyhow, um, tonight, what I want to talk about, anyhow, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, please share this video as well. Please share this video. I'll appreciate that. Uh, tonight, what I really want to talk about is um, Davos. I want to talk about um, Trump. I want to talk about um, this whole issue regarding the, uh, what should I say, the... The doctor who got 175 years um, for abusing some of the um, young ladies in, in America.
um, these are ladies who are very much involved in the Olympics, and I think that's very crucial. <coughs> so tonight, um, all being well, touch wood. I know Rupert, when we had you on, we had some, some hiccups, but um, touch wood. I'm hoping to get um, Miss Suan um, Robinson. Suan Robinson, um, she's a, a, a lawyer, attorney in the States, featured on Fox News um, Channel. Fox Business, Right to America, um, Newsmax, America Trends, um, and Studio, and as well. So she will be coming on at some point. Um, and um, she serves as lead counsel. Now, Sue, I can see you there, but somehow we are not <clears throat> connected <clears throat> properly. I'm not seeing that green icon. Um, icon. What should I say? If you can do the same thing which you did yesterday, and then I can take you on, or much better, if you actually can invite yourself on, that would make it even much more super duper, super ice cream cola, as they would say. Um, the the other aspect, um, I'm babysitting. I Chris Rock is in town, so I'm lifting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris. No video yet, but I'm here. Okay, well, the video is there. So, um, um, yeah. <clears throat> Chris Rock is in town, most definitely. So, um, I, it is so ridiculous, you know, you know, with, with the Chris Rock jive and everything like that, you know. Um, so, looking forward to that. Well, well, Sue, um, I sent you an invite, Sue, um, now. So, if you can accept that invite like what we did yesterday. And I, I bring you on. And, yes, so we did it. Awesome. Ah, let's, let's clap each other that we did it, isn't it? Sue? Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing today? Good? Amazing. Ah, amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as I said tonight, I, I really want to go across the, the trans, the uh, Atlantic and go all the way to America because I've got this thinking that you Americans are obsessed with Trump. You know? <laughs> yes, you guys are obsessed with Trump, aren't you? Huh? How can you not? We, we have a reality star as president. I mean, that in and of itself shows, you know, there's some obsession with celebrity culture for sure. Like, he's also, not a lawyer. He didn't go to law school. None of that stuff. Like, his claim to fame is that he had a famous reality television show. All right. So, so what? So, so it's not a businessman or anything. It's just a reality show that we're having, yes? Absolutely. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for joining. I, I have uh, Ms. Suan Robinson. She's an uh, attorney and legal an analysis. Uh, Suan has been featured on Fox News, Channel News, Fox Business. Um, she serves as a lead cons counsel on dozens of jury trials in private practice and as a former assistant state attorney. She has engineered her 10 years in courtroom experience and Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just giving you 10% of what Suan does. Am I right, Suan? <laughs> I have no idea who you're talking about, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Suan has been recognized by the National Black Lawyers as one of the top 40 black lawyers under 40 in the United States. As you can see, she's only 25. <laughs> um, black Thank Enterprise you, Magazine. God bless you. <laughs> yeah, listed Suan as one of 10, top 10 black women lawyers you should know in the nation. Suan, welcome. How are you? Good. Thank you for having me. And thank you for, you know, coordinating this from across the pond. Yes. Yes. I, I think it is very important because in the UK right now, there is a level of obsession with not seeing Trump coming in. Um, right. People in America... in, you mean people in the UK don't want President Trump to come over there for a visit? Definitely. And even though he's in Davos now, and he gave that speech, which was completely scripted. Um, they're now demonstrating that he's there, but it's a bit too late now. And I gave the speech and everything like that. But tell me this. So I, I want to put you on the spot now. Is America okay. obsessed? Is America obsessed with Trump? I mean, every single thing is Trump. You wake up in the morning, Don Lemon, um, everybody in Fox News is just Trump, Trump, Trump. I mean, right. you, you make a comment, whether you make a comment or not, it's what he's yeah. saying. The Twitter goes out. Everybody is, is paranoid. Trump, Trump, Trump. What's happening with you guys over there? Is there other thing other than Trump? Talk to me. 
No, I don't think we're obsessed with Trump. I think Trump is actually his biggest fan. And I think, like I said, his claim to fame is that he's a media person. So mm -hmm. this is what he does. He sits down and he thinks of the most salacious, outrageous things he can do or he can say so that he can drive his celebrity and his popularity. And that's what it's really about for him. I honestly think he wakes up every morning in shock that he's in the Oval Office. Yes, he's, I, I believe he still cannot believe that he's still there. I think he's still like, what? And then he tweets and he's like, oh yeah, I'm the president. Whoops, okay, too bad. But but let's 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 call a spade a spade at the same time. Isn't the office of the president one which should be respected? Yes, the office, correct. The office of by the, the person who's in it too, though. It has to be respected by the person who's in the office as well. And I think that's the problem. I just think, you know, he's just not in the frame of mind to understand the enormity of the job because it almost happened on by an accident or on mistake. And so he just doesn't have a clear understanding of how his tweets and little things that he does affects everyone in the country, obviously, and then how he's on an international stage. And now I think he's just essentially using it to raise his popularity. This is like the longest marketing campaign. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Rupert Francis said, the obsession is that it appears that nothing happened before he got in office. And everything is happening now. That's the sort of uh, feedback. And as we're talking about recently is that he's claiming credit for everything which is good. Right. Which is hilarious. But it makes sense because that's what a media machine does. I don't think, you know, he's going to sit down and take credit for bad things. Like he's not going to take credit for police brutality or the high incidence of murder in Chicago, he's not gonna do that. He's gonna say, hey, look, Hispanics and Blacks have more jobs. The, the unemployment rate has gone down for these two segments. So, you know, hey, under my administration. But he's all about a sound bite. It's like, if you fact check anything he says, I think they've had numerous stories about how if you fact check his speeches or his comments, there's a lot of lies involved. It's even with the thing about him saying, under his administration, more African Americans and more Hispanics have works, have have jobs. Yeah. That's correct. The number is going down, but it's been on the decline at the same rate since 2010, which would have been when Obama was in office. So he has his administration hasn't drastically affected the rate at which African Americans or Hispanics get jobs, but it sounds good and it drives news and it'll drive media and it's a soundbite for him to go to maybe if he decides to show up in some African American communities, he can say, "Hey, look, so so you got so, more so, jobs, guys." So 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 we can confidently say then that um, everything which Trump is claiming credit for is somewhat from the Obama stream. Yeah, there's a lot of things that it's too early on for him to start to take credit for, and when you actually start to fact check and crunch the numbers themselves, you can see there the things that he takes credit for have been trending for four and four. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we lost you slightly there, but I think you might be coming back. As shortly. marketing to and just drive his now. popularity. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, I've been thinking about this and if he's claiming credit for the positive things, which people say is on the Obama stream and Trump is actually giving credit to Obama for all the negative things which is happening now. Then let's mm -hmm. we can I think we can safely say that Trump is not responsible for anything. Then he's he is responsible for something. He is responsible for getting everyone's attention. He's responsible for awakening a segment of the population that has been ignored for a long time. His voter base they've been ignored. So he's been responsible for kind of waking those people up and giving them a voice. And he's been responsible for basically panicking everyone into politicizing themselves because everyone now sees what the terrible things could possibly happen if you have someone in office that doesn't have their themselves together or is not willing to look to their cabinet for answers or 
look to the people to see what actually needs to be done. He's just doing whatever he wants. And so people are like, whoa, we need to get active politically, which I directly credit to him because people are literally scared and concerned and are now starting to educate themselves on politics and, and what's going on. I mean, he sits there and he literally is, that's correct. He tries to undo every single thing that Obama has done. Whether it makes sense or not, he's like, I'm undoing it. And he's responsible for that too. So, you know, he, he gets credit for a lot of things, but for um, lowering the unemployment rate for African-Americans and Hispanics, I, I just, I can't do it. That's a conflation of politics and economics that he just can't get credit for. Well, one of the questions that I have to ask is this, and uh, you see, many people have the view, and I somewhat take that view as well, that Obama was somewhat like a screensaver. And a screensaver, as you, a screensaver, as you know, gives an impression on your computer, but when you touch the button, it reveals mm -hmm. a reality. It is mm -hmm. deemed that Trump is the person that somewhat says, America, this is what it really is is this is the reality that that undercurrent or that sort of uh what should i say the the fan base or is based now that 45 million which he followed well that 45 million it doesn't comprise only of his fan base but comprise of everybody else who wants to know what trump is because you know so it could be deemed to say that he's actually revealing this is america mm -hmm. reality no, I don't, I don't think that's true. I think he reveals his perspective of what America is no, and the perspective yeah, yeah. of America yeah. that supports yeah. his values. But that's what I think he's revealing. I don't think he's re revealing what America stands for. He's revealing his yeah. own perspective and the perspective of his base, the people that he's catering to because he wants to make sure that he possibly gets a second term. I mean, when he walks around talking about this border wall, if America wanted a goddamn border wall, it wouldn't have just come up under him for the first time ever, this border wall issue. This is a, his thing. This is something that he's saying to his base. This is, you know, messaging that they want to hear. Oh, we're going to keep them out and keep us in. And he's messaging to his base. That, that's not an American thing, because if that was something that was, you know, the, the bedrock of, U.S. policy or the bedrock of U.S. foreign policy, it wouldn't have just come up. It, so another person would have discussed this. This would have been something practical that would have been in effect or would have been on its way. But it's, it's a him thing. He thinks it sounds interesting and it caters to his base to say, I'm going to keep them out, whoever they are, and keep yeah. us in. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand that most of the things that he does and the things that he says, he's messaging to his base. Now, listen, um, there's a viewpoint as well. This is one here now. Is it 20th? Is, is, is it the 20th of January? One year now since he's in office, since right. inauguration, yeah? Um, I think also it is was the end of the Obama period where many people were crying, okay? Crying because Obama was leaving, but crying also because Trump is coming in. The stock market has exploded. Is that a fact or not? Right. Or is it a fake? Is that fake? What? That the stock market has risen since yes. the it's time period? It's a phenomenon, yes. Yes, that is correct. Many people thought that that would crash at the same time, but that has risen phenomenon. Uh, many people have the view as well, and it is also a fact that Trump has actually said certain things and he's actually doing it. This is one of the first time many people are saying, I also say that, that you see someone coming in, say what they're going to do, may not be popular or not, but he's actually doing it. The authentication or the authentic nature of politicians is seen as something of the past. But Trump is actually bringing something whereby this is what I say, this is what I'm going to do. Tax break, the ta I mean, when he was in Davos, one of the first things everybody was applauding him to say that, with America where it is now, it is fueling and leading the way for the economy of the world globally. That's what right. I think that the issue with respect to Trump's the Trump effect on economics and his effect on the stock market, I think has to do with 
something very foundational, which is contract law. I think yeah. overall, over time, should he stay in office and continue to conduct himself in the manner that he is and continue to just undo things and, you know, allow government shutdowns and not to kind of come across the table and try to work together to get solutions, I think it's going to erode the international perception of our legal system in terms of contract, which is mm -hmm. the basis for all business relationships. So I think once, if the international community starts to get the sense that his behavior, his, his erratic <laughs> behavior or his erratic comments are going to affect the legal system in some way, then we're actually going to start to lose credibility in terms of people believing in our system of law. And so I think he, that's the threat. That's the issue. Whether or not the stock market at this moment is up or down is yes. not to me the issue. I think the issue is whether or not his behavior gives the impression to the international community that legally our, our legal system is in trouble because we've elected this person that seems to be erratic and not able to be, not controlled, but not understanding what his job is in the sense that he's not attempting to work together with the rest of the government. He's just doing whatever he wants. So one day, is he going to walk in there and say, hey, no more, um, you know, no more contracts with people from X country, or we're no longer allowing this type of business? Like, is he going to be able to do that? And to the extent the international community starts to feel those concerns, that's when we have real issues, when people start to have um, um, lose confidence in our legal system, in our contract, that's when all the business stuff will cause problems. Whether the stock market is up or down really is something cyclical that has no bearing on what he's doing or what he's not doing. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining. Um, I've got uh, Ms. Sue Ann Robbins, the Esquire. She's an attorney at law in the United States, and um, she's joining me. She's being featured on Fox News, um, Fox Business, um, RT America, and um, she, uh, she, well, uh, based on your um, your your uh, your files, I saw whereby they keep calling upon yourself for every single thing. Um, and we're going to touch on a couple of things later. But in Davos recently, um, the, the tone, because Davos is about economics, really. Davos is about the financial factor. The, the, the mood in Davos, separate and apart from the persons who do not want this man that talk about S-hole and this man that talk about um, grabbing whatever like that. They don't want that person. But the, the, in Davos, they saw a, a fresh 20 years. It's been 20 years since an American president has gone to Davos. And they have lots of music for him or whatever like that. They see it as, they saw it as very positive and um, so on. I mean, will America actually reach the point where they say, let us really come together and support our president? Not his rhetorics, which is not negative, but Will they come together? Will you guys come together? People are together. I think people are together in different <laughs> factions. And that's yeah. the issue. And a lot of people say Obama was a screensaver, etc. But the issue is his, his whole presidency and what he was, <clears throat> his rhetoric was about unity. Like, let's unify. Let's try to work together. Let's kumbaya. Let's see how we can solve problems and work together to do that stuff. He wasn't able to do that all the time because he didn't get the support from everyone in the way that he needed to do the things. I think yes. yeah. what what's happening now is a lot of people are being labeled and feeling like they have to stick together in their different segments and groups. And then overall, there's this group that says, well, we're for Trump. And then the group that says, we're not for Trump. And then there's all these subsections oh, well, women now have to stand up for themselves. People who have been sexually abused have to now, you know, stand up and unify for themselves. African-Americans have to go in their separate corner and stand up for themselves. People from these S-hole countries now have to create their own group to stand up for themselves. So it's yes. very divisive. Yeah. His, his but at the same time, yeah. But at the same time, what you're saying is that it is actually bringing people together in a different way at the same time. In a more powerful yes. way. Wow. I, 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 want, I yeah. think it, yes, yes, and I think his job is fifty percent um, psychological. It, it's fifty percent psychological. You have to 
have the people in the country and people outside the country, they have to have confidence in you. They have to have confidence in the American president. That's, you know, the, the, the perception is that the president of America is one of the most powerful people in the world. So yeah. if you don't have confidence in this person on a daily basis, it does affect the country. It affects people on a day-to-day -day basis because they don't feel confident. Well, one of your countrymen just says, not true. I, he, says, he says, I'm not a Trump supporter, but her remarks have no true foundation. It is very political always. The fact is that the Democrats lost. Should uh -huh. that, and should they not get over it um, and, and really pull behind the president? Pull behind what, though? Pull behind what specific thing the president wants to do? Like, should they pull behind things, things that he says? What is it that you're saying the Democrats need to support him in? In what? His own party doesn't support him half the time. So yep. if, if there's something specific, that the Democrats need to get behind, if, if in your opinion that they're not, that he's doing that's positive, then, then we can discuss that. But just to say generally that Democrats should get behind him is... is... I, I, th I, think, I think you're right. I think you're right, um, um, Suan, because um, <clears throat> politics is politics, and uh, that is why you got checks and balances. That's why you have Democrat um, and Republican. That's why in the UK you've got conservative and you have um, um, the, the Labour Party as well. Now, I, I want to talk about, uh, let's move on from that to, to DACA and to the, the ICE and the Dreamers. Right now, you're going through a period whereby families are being split apart. Um, you're a lawyer. Uh, what's happening in that particular area? And because the government was shut down recently because the Democrats wanted some immigration policy um, mm -hmm. that was somewhat... Um, be amenable to the whole thing. Can you break what, what happened there? You know, what I just think it? What, what, my perspective on what happened, what is happening with DACA is that this DACA situation needed to be extended, resolved, dealt with. I feel like he brought that conversation into the limelight about DACA, saying he's going to reverse it because it's a mama thing. You know, we're going to take it down. We're going to tear it down. And then now saying, oh, well, I'm fixing it because I'm creating a pathway for them to have citizenship legally. Yeah. So to me, it just seems like another, another opportunity for him to kind of take credit for something. It's like he brought them into the forefront by saying he's, he, you know, he's ending the program and now is saying, oh, well, I'm creating this pathway to citizenship. They were, they were doing fine. Yes. It, it just... So it's kind of like, okay, so you're bringing them out to say you're ending the program to now say you're creating a pathway to citizenship for them. It, it just seems disingenuous to do something like that. It seems very um, political to do that, to say, oh, we're ending this program, but I'm creating something for you. Just like the whole healthcare thing. Oh, well, you know, this Obamacare is terrible. We got to get rid of it. But I don't have anything better, but we have to get rid of it. Yeah, and and also and also at the same time, we're having families being broken up. Families, um, people have been there in the states from the age of five or so, six, and they are now being. Uh, are you there? You okay? Have I lost you? I think I've got you. Are you coming Can you back? See me? Um. Ah, got you back. You're there. Okay. Yes. Yeah, good. Uh, well, I was talking about recently that there are families now which are being split apart. Um, mm -hmm. People have been coming, who have been in the States from the age of five, and they, they, they've been deported. Right. You know, um, and if I compare that with what's happening in the, in, the, in, the, in the UK as well, I mean, you got a gentleman recently came to the UK at six years of age from the Caribbean on his brother's passport, and at the age of 60, when he's ready to go to Jamaica to visit his mother, um, they said, hang on a second, we have no papers on yourself. Um, you're going to be deported. Is that somewhat, why don't, are people coming to the age of from five years of age in America, why are they not sorting their papers for all those 50 years as well, 30, 40 years? You said, why have they not filed it? Yeah, well, yeah, why, I don't know what your system is there, but I mean, these persons who are now being deported, Mm -hmm. They have their families, adult children. 
Right. Oh, why is why is that happening? Yeah, um, yeah. I my perspective again is that this is a messaging. Us. Okay, we're we're sticking. Are you there? Yep. Am I? You? Am I on? Yes. Yeah, you're on Sue. There's also a reason, yeah, so, but keep going. Yes. So uh, that's what I think. I just think, you know, this whole thing of I'm gonna, you know, I'm directing, you know, ICE to over police everyone and check. I mean, there's things happening in South Florida where there's um, immigration agents going on buses that are going from Orlando to Miami and checking people's paperwork to make sure people are in order and taking people off of buses, like little old ladies. These are not the bad hombres that he, you know, campaigned on saying he was getting rid of these bad people. There's little old ladies, You, like you said, a 60-year-old man. These are not mm -hmm. people who have you know, are drug traffickers committing crimes, not working, not contributing to the economy, et cetera. These are people that are here, that have been here, that are have been working and contributing perfectly fine and, and have committed no crimes. So to me, again, it just seems disingenuous to campaign on the promise that you're going to get rid of bad immigrants. But when in reality, what is happening is that there's no, how do, how can they, actually differentiate between who's bad and who's good. What mm -hmm. makes someone... Yeah, what makes... Yep. <clears throat> ...to happen. Uh, uh, you, you, you stopped there for a second on what is bad and what is good. And I think we, we froze there uh, again very briefly. Uh, are you there? Yes. Yeah, when you said when you said um, what is bad and what is good, we, we froze right there. Can you go back to what you meant when you said what is bad and what is good? Well, what is bad and what what I meant by that is that when um, Trump campaigned, he said that he wanted to get rid of bad hombres and he listed you know rapists and people who committed crimes and people who did not contribute to the economy. And he said yeah. that's the, those are the people that he was. Um, saying he wanted to get rid of in his immigration policies that he was going to enact once he got in office. And I yeah. don't see that happening. I don't, I, I haven't heard any stories. And I'm not saying that no, none of these people that he claims are bad are being removed. I'm saying the only stories that I'm seeing are, like you said, people's families being broken apart, mm. little old ladies and old men. So to me, it just seems like what he's really doing is getting rid of people like a, some sort of cleansing or something like that which is strange to me it, it's like what is the real purpose of you know sending a 60 year old person home that's lived here since they were six years old what is the purpose of that wasn't that happening on the obama on the side obama what? on the obama's administration there were a lot of deportation wasn't that there, so? there's there's always going to be deportation and there's going to be deportation subject to criminal laws people coming under scrutiny because they have been arrested, because they have been called in because of paperwork issues. Not, never under Obama were ICE agents directed to police bus routes and check people's papers and make sure papers are in order or pull people over and check their immigration paperwork during basic police interaction. That was not happening. Mm. That's something new. Right, he can right. take credit so for Okay. Yeah. So, what 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 is then? Um, Trump in Davos said this, speaking at the World Economic Forum, says that African Americans and Hispanics, under his president's presidency, now experience the highest employment rates in half a century. Um, right. Is this true? Second, does this matter? And to underpin that, what is the state of Black America now with Black Lives Matters and that period which we just went through? Uh, how is that moving on? Okay, so it is true that the employment rate of African, the unemployment rate has gone down for African Americans. Is that, is that a fact? Sorry, we, we just froze slightly there. Um, I don't see anything. We, um, there's, I, I, there's I, nothing. Yeah, we, we froze. We, we, 
we we froze briefly there for a second. Um, I think we just froze again. Yeah, there's nothing specific that he has done to effectuate the unemployment rate of the of African Americans or Hispanics going down. There, I, yeah. I just don't see how he can take credit for something that's been on trend at the exact same rate since 2010. So no, I don't. I don't. I I think it's great that it, the trend is continuing and it's trending down, but. I don't think he should be taking credit for it because I think it's disingenuous to do that. If he was just there um, saying, hey, this is the state of America, I'm just letting you guys know that this is the trend, then fine, but you can't take credit for it if, if you're not actually doing something for that. I think he was just campaigning at that point, honestly. Mm -hmm. And with respect to the state of the Black Lives Matter movement, was that your question? Well, I think it's only more the state of Black America now because my, my thinking is this as well, that um, at this time, you've got a president there that people don't like or whatever like that. Um, are people preparing? Are, are, is Black people getting involved in politics? Will you be running for Congress or get, get into the Senate or something like that? Um, putting, our vo putting your voices there I instead of um, demonstrating and just complaining? Well, I don't, I don't demonstrate or complain. I actually, you know, I obviously I work in the legal system every day. Yeah. And part of my job as a legal analyst and a legal correspondent is to assist people in understanding what's going on and bringing a voice to issues and stories so that people will, you know, garner themselves together and work to do things like run for office and things like that. I personally don't plan on running for office. I think what's happening now, I think there's a big movement towards um, African Americans focusing on their economics, getting their economic house together, understanding economics, educating their kids on economics, which is an important thing. That's that's a big piece of mm. um, you know having political power is to organize, to have PACs and all of those things. So I see a lot of that going on. I do see a lot of um, African Americans and women running for office, which is great. I think diversity really is the key because when you only have one perspective from one you know type of person or person from a certain background all the time that's really when it causes problems in government because everyone feels like their voice is not being heard and their needs are not being recognized and so i do think again that he can take credit the president can take credit for freaking everybody out and making everybody recognize their their own individual yes their own individual um we just got a, a glitch right there again. Um, it's going to come back shortly after one, two, and uh, three. Yes, it's back. <laughs> Don't worry, we keep getting out, but that's all great. Yes. Talking about keeping credit. I know, work across the pond. So I think that's what it is. Yeah. So tell me now. Uh, so so with, with the World Black Lives Movement, Colin Kaepernick and, um, yeah. and, and the, the Neil that seemed to have been fizzled out. And what we're talking about is Monique seeking boycott of Netflix. No, I don't think Colin's issues or what he was doing with respect to kneeling during the NFL games, I don't think any of those issues have fizzled out. And I don't, I don't think a lot of people, I have a very different opinion of the Monique issue than a lot of people. So I think her overall request is that we examine the fact that there is a pay disparity and recognize that and embrace that. I think because some people or a lot of people don't like her or maybe are not fans of hers, they feel like, well, she's not a good person to be the face of that discussion. The, yes. the pay disparity in Hollywood. Like she's not the person, like maybe if it was Haley Berry or maybe if it was an, um, Oprah. Um, the girl, Oprah, <laughs> which she doesn't have a pay disparity issue, but if it was someone that people liked or was more, you know, centralized or whatever, then people would support what she's saying. But I think it, because it's her, it, and I actually discussed this on my radio show because I was like, why were we all behind Colin Kaepernick but no one, and you know, obviously, what he was, his protest had to do with police brutality, and you know, Monique's issue is is economic, and so yeah. I, I don't know if people are ready 
for that conversation. I think she's like almost like on a very, she's an early starter with respect to let's start uh, using our boycotting and political power be behind economic issues. I think that's what the issue is. I think people are not ready for that, number one. And number two, she's not the person to do it. She's not unifying enough for people to really respect what she's saying. But her issue is legitimate. There is a pay disparity in Hollywood. There's a pay disparity just generally that women get paid less than men. Um, white women get paid less than white men and black women get paid the least of all. So that is a real issue. That is a genuine issue that people should get behind. Whether or not Monique can lead that conversation is another, is another issue. Do you know that you did not say anything about Trump in that aspect of this brief five minutes ago? That's great. I think that's an area where people can move on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, it, it is good that nothing was mentioned of Trump a second ago um, with, that, with that trust, which is great. I think that is something that people can have some sort of assurance. Huh? Sorry. So we, we lost you there, but I'm no, I know you're going to be coming back in next one, two, three, four, five, six seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, please share this video while we are waiting for uh, um, Sue Ann to come back. And if, if anything, she might have to. Sue Ann, what I'm going to Yes, that's it. Fantastic. So what, what, what has happened? She has logged out. And I think what, what will happen is that she will come back and then make it better. But I'm looking at some of the, the comments here in the meantime, until Suan is back. Um, uh, they're talking about families are being broken all the time on the, uh, let me see if I can get her back, Suan, yep. Um, families are being broken all the time on the Obama. Um, 2,000 Jamaicans were deported in 10 years. Um, um, yeah, it's, a, it's someone to say it's a witch hunt. Um, people are considered as criminals as much as possible, um, and 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 many many of those things. So different views right there. And but I think one of the things, um, and, and I was bringing with um, Sue was the whole aspect of the Americans are coming together because in Davos, one of the things they said in Davos is that it would be great if the uh, the, the people sort of come together and and the, the leader for the Davos was talking about that they know that at some point they're gonna take out of context the speech by President Trump because of political uh, wrangling. I'm just getting back Sue right here, you know? But it'd be good to hear what, what you what you have to what you what you what you say or what what's your what's your thoughts on that. Um Sue when you come back just um give us that sort of link and we'll bring you back in because we want to talk about the and the NASA case whereby this um, uh, doctor was able to be um, sentenced for 175 years. I want to make a comparison with the UK. Um, and there is Sue, and she's back. And bring back Sue on camera. Awesome. Um, so people want to be in your video. There we go. And um, so we give her a few seconds. I believe by her actually. Um, logging out and coming back in, it sort of re reset the whole um, stage and make it um, a, a bit better. So let's give her a few minutes for that to come back on. Um, thank you so much for joining and uh, please share this video as well. And uh, I've got Sue Ann Robinson um, from the States um, talking about, um, you know, different aspects of uh, politics and as a legal media. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Let me send her back an invite. Bring Sue on camera. Okay, Sue, I've sent you uh, 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 an email to, to that. Uh, sorry, not an email, but um, another alert. You know, um, Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for joining, and thank you so much for joining on the, the late one with Sue Byrne and uh, with my guest, Sue, and uh, Keisha, Venice, Lorna, 
report, report as I said. Thank you for your, your input report as much as possible right here. Um, it shows so much that uh, it's very toxic and very divisive at this time. Trump is a very divisive factor, but at the same time, uh, he is the president of America. I would love to see him come to the UK, not because I want to see the demonstration on the stones and all the police coming out and anything like that, but it would be great to actually um, see this level of co cooperation and somewhat coming together of you know, the world, because at the end of the day, we can't all be uh, fighting each other at this time. Um, so, so that's 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 the thing there. Let me see. Swan coming one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, see. Da, 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 da. Let's give her a few minutes. Add in. Yep. 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 Yeah. The, the, what, 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 one of the things that I, I spoke about recently was the, the doctor, the doctor which is NASA, NASA who got 175 years, 175 years for abusing these young girls, right? 100, 175 years for abusing these young girls. One second, yeah. Approved. And yeah, 175 years for abusing these um, young ladies. And at the same time, in the UK, there is the advent of Mr. Warbor, John Warbors. John Warbors is to be released from prison after 10 years for raping, uh, they say maybe over 100 or so women in a taxi. 10 years in comparison to Mr. Nassar. 175 years. And at the same time, if you want to make a sort of comparison in Jamaica, because of course persons have been listening to a couple of my shows regarding persons who have been abused um, and the pedophile factor, persons have just been getting away um, with, with with murder over these years, whereby they, they seem to be um, not able to... Sorry, let me just try to see if I can get slowly. Yeah. Yeah, they seem to be. Uh, sorry, one second. So, uh, yeah, they seem they seem to be not getting persons with level of conviction. So it is like the litmus test at this time seem to be with um, America charging the way with hundred and seventy five years, hundred and seventy five years. I was speaking to someone earlier today who actually said they were raped and they were actually held captive by their rapists um, and you know some time ago in, in the UK and that was something which was very um, in the news and most importantly it, it is it is something that says that at, at the same time there is this disparity when it comes on to this level of sentence and level of convictions I must say so this is something which needs to be actually looked at and I'm hoping to get someone to actually um, speak a bit on, on that particular thing there with Mr. Warbol and, and NASA. Because if we remember with, with Al Nasser, sorry, one second. With, with, with Al, with, what, what's his name? Um, ah, so how are you doing? You okay? Yeah. I, I know you wanted to go away and get some drink or so like that. You could have asked for that, you know what I mean? I, need, I needed a break, counselor. I needed a <laughs> yeah. recess, Your Honor. Well, it was a default thing. Um, so on, what, what I wanted to do now, because we, we sort of lost a little time there, and I think we, we've touched a bit on the chum factor there. I wanted to touch on to La Mr. Nasser, that is mm. the Larry Nasser. Um, this is within mm -hmm. your domain now. 175 right. years. Mm-hmm. Um, for the the level the, the, the sentence in for him, uh, what's your take right. on, on? Yeah, I think that the entire institution needs to be examined because I think to for Nassar to have 
been so such a prolific user. Okay. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's how passionate I am about the issue. But I think for him to have been allowed to have abused so many people over such a long period of time, he had to have enablers. And I'm not saying that people were necessarily supporting what he was doing, but I think there's things institutionally that allow someone to do that for so long. And I think that's what needs to be examined to stop it from happening again. I think the 175 year sentence represents life, basically. They're trying to say, you've been done these things, they are so deplorable and they're so horrible, you deserve to spend your life, the rest of your life in prison yes. for what you did. And so that's kind of what the sentence represents. But I think the real issue and what the victims really need to be focused on are what structures are in place at the school that allowed for that to go on? Why is there no, why were the federal monitoring, why was the school requesting for those things to be rolled back as he was mm -hmm. there abusing people? Why are the way that they were handling the complaints, they were not fully vetting and investigating these complaints over time? I think the institution itself is gonna have a lot to deal with. And that's why you see the board, people on the board are resigning, et cetera, because whether knowingly or negligently, they feel involved because it happened on their watch. Yes, and yes. so I think those institutions have to be examined. There has to be a whole culture involved in order for someone to molest that many people over that long of a period and no one is able to stop it until now. And and, and that's why they say they are now the, the spotlight is now going to be shine on the the network of the yes. you know for him to, to for him to have been operating like that. Um, there must have been a sort of network. Not saying people are complicit um, directly, but complicit maybe indirectly. Right, because it's a successful program and people culturally are thinking this is a program that brings money to the school. This is a program that brings notoriety to, to the school. So if we have to sacrifice one or two or ten people in order to maintain our funding over this particular program, then eh, maybe we're willing to look the other way. And I don't, I, and I don't think that was a specific conversation, but I think that kind of may have been the culture. When a student or an athlete came in to complain, it's kind of like, let's not bring a spotlight on this issue because this is a very elite and important program to the school. So let's try to resolve it and make this person happy in a way that's not going to destroy this entire program. So essentially, the athletes were being sacrificed, and the athletes are actually the program in and of itself. So it almost doesn't make sense, but that's what it looks like was happening. It looks like people's complaints were being overlooked because the preservation of the program was the most important thing at the time. Do, do you think that the Me Too campaign somewhat contributed to this um, sentencing and this the spotlight on this particular case to a certain extent. Yeah, absolutely. The, the... I think I think right now what's happening is people feel that if they're a victim of sexual abuse, domestic violence, there it's slowly becoming something in which you don't have to feel ashamed. You can say I was abused or I am being abused and feel like people are gonna accept, one, accept what you're saying, and number two, try to assist you, and three, try to get justice for you. Whereas I think before this movement, I think there was a lot of victim shaming, even legal victim shaming in the sense that there was jury instructions allowed to discuss the sexual history of people in, in um, sexual abuse cases and in rape cases, but I think that is, the going the way of the past. And I think now people are actually 
open to the fact that this is something that's happening, obviously. Let's embrace these victims and let's try to get justice for them as opposed to let's just sweep it under the rug and not talk about it and everybody just kind of move on. Yeah, there, there, I want to make a comparison to a situation whereby there is this taxi driver in the UK and this taxi driver is by the name of Mr. John Warboys. Um, John Warboys was released from jail after serving the minimum of term of his sentence, which was less than 10 years um, soon. Um, are you there, yeah? I'm here. Okay, yeah. The, the offense for John Warboy took um, place between 2002 and 2008. He was charged of one rape, five sexual assaults, one attempted assault, and 12 drugging charges. Um, and uh, what is happening now is a situation whereby he the probation is releasing him under 10 years. Uh, the sticking point is that other ladies wanted to bring their case forward and the prosecution and the police said, that's okay, we've got him, it's all covered. Now they are peed off the, by the fact that probation is now actually releasing him on the 10 years. And the mayor and other persons are trying to stop him from coming out. They are trying to get the report from probation as well because under the, under the law, you cannot disclose that publicly. Um, if anything, you want to change an act of parliament or whatever like that. So it is like the pressure in the States, the 175 years, and which is what is happening over here in the UK now, is like victims are feeling that they are not um, taken seriously. Mm -hmm. Women who have been abused feel like they're not being taken seriously. Yeah, but, I think that's something, you know, like to, to quote Oprah, you know, time is up. The time's up on that, on people not taking abuse victims seriously. I think that obviously that is one of the most horrible crimes. And then for the person to be caught, convicted, and then still be out and free is difficult for the victim in the sense that, you know, they, they possibly are living under the idea that any time the person who abused or victimized them could have the opportunity to do it again. Yes. But not just that, if the sentencing doesn't seem appropriate for what the person has done, then there's always gonna be that sense of injustice, right? People are always mm -hmm. gonna feel like th this just wasn't right. What happened wasn't appropriate based on the circumstances. So either, you know, in the U in the UK, yep. Movement. Um, yep. I in think it's necessary. That's a necessary pressure that should be applied internationally because women are marginalized by these issues and women should not feel marginalized by these types of issues. And so if the Me Too movement is spreading internationally, then that's great. Yeah. And also like in Jamaica, recently I had a guest on and I've been looking at these issues in regards to women are being abused from their children as well. Um, but somewhat in Jamaica, there hardly seem to be any conviction in these particular cases. There are one or two going through now, but there's hardly much conviction. So that is something where the pressure needs to be on, you know. Um, but listen, um, so listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, and thank you for I think, we'll, yeah, I, I want to keep keep the, the momentum on, on, on the chum factor there. But before I go away, what do you think of Brexit? What do you guys think of Brexit? Do you guys know there's other people, other places in the world? What, what's, what do you guys yeah, think, think of Brexit? I think Brexit represents a people just wanting something different than what the status quo. So to me, when I see that and then I see people, you know, electing a reality star to be president, it, it kind of signals the same underlying thing that people want change. But who was, who was Arnold Schwarzenegger? Who was Arnold Schwarzenegger? Who is he? Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. The, the former governor of California? 
What what, what is mean, he? What, 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 prior to being the governor? Yeah, what was he? What was he before he became the governor? He was a um he was in movies and he was a bodybuilder and he was married to someone who was very politically active. The Kennedy. So I would imagine so, his household had a lot so, of So he was a movie. So, so he was an actor. He was an actor, wasn't he? Right. Yes, and he he was a governor though. He wasn't the president, which is a big a bit different. Ronald Reagan. Who was that president? It was a president. Yes, Ronald Reagan. Definitely an actor for sure. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, so I think what I'm trying to what I'm trying to point out there is maybe maybe this is it, um, Sue. Maybe people are fed up with the typical status quo of the politician, slick Rick, you know, with their, 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 their men in black, which actually sex up documents or whatever like that to make it to say the right thing, say the right words. They don't speak it as it is. Maybe people are actually fed up with that. Maybe they don't want politicians. What do you think about that? <clears throat> uh, why, why, why? Maybe they don't want politicians. I'm so. Huh? Are you there? We keep we keep losing each other. There. So I don't I don't think people um, electing Trump represents people wanting truthfulness. It can't mean that. I mean, and I think that's why, why now why a lot not? of people why, why not? Why, why can't be truth? Why 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 can't be truth? Why not that they don't want someone to straight because talk and say to them? You just do basic fact checking on things, just basic things he says. He lies. I think there was a news story like he lies like, you know, 14, 15 times a week. Like everything he says, like it just when you fact check what he says, even during his debates, he was mm. just saying random things. So to the extent that he represents the ability to blurt out whatever you want, whether it is true or not, yeah. certainly he does that. And he I does go, it want, all the time yeah. very well. I want to go back to the Brexit now. You mentioned Brexit. People want something different again. Yeah. So is, is it just different they want? Or are they, ever, they feel left behind? They feel not listened to? That seemed to be the mood at times. People don't feel listened to. The left agenda, yeah, the liberal yeah. agenda. I think that people get torn between these agendas. And I think the issue is, and I said it when people were starting to get excited that Roy Moore didn't get elected in Alabama and everyone was saying, oh, you know, these African-American women are the ones who carry the vote. And I said, well, yeah. my first thing was whether or not these African-American women that carry the vote for the person who actually won, whether or not they had an agenda for this person, for their yes. community, or whether it was just about let's not have Roy Moore because he's a bad person, which he did very bad things and I don't think he should be in office. But I think if you're gonna use your political power and use your vote, you have to have an agenda and hold the people accountable. Just like, you know, the president has his base and his base is like, hey, you have to do these things that you say you were gonna do or else we're gonna withdraw our support or else you're gonna have a problem. However, they're messaging him, he is being held accountable to whatever things he said he was going to do. So that's why I think the issue to me is, yes, it is great to vote for more diverse people in government. I think that the most important thing is that people understand their issues and understand how to present these things in a formalized agenda to elected officials in something so that they can actually affect Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess individual uh, she's going to come back on in one, two, three. People focusing on local government and community issues is really where you effectuate change on an individual basis for people. So I think people need to look at judicial elections, mayoral elections, and things like that if they are concerned about their individual economics and their future, not what the president is doing, respectfully. Well, that's awesome. Well, listen, um, thanks for that. And um, that, that was really great. Yes. And uh, well, and I think we, we will be, touch, we'll be doing some link up some more as to 
transatlantic discussions. Um, yes. When when Trump comes to the UK, we'll take that one further. Yes. And I think he may not be able to come back because I think in Davos, I think they blocked the airport, so he might not. I think you guys' prayers may be answered. <laughs> yes. You know, but before we go, um, can you tell me uh, something that can inspire persons, like one of your quotes or some mantra or something um, that motivate person? What drives you? Um, so on? I think to me, what drives me is that I want to definitely use my voice and for my legacy to be that I made the space that I occupied better for other people. Not just that I was here, but that I made things better. And so that's what I use my platform for as much as possible. Obviously right now with who we have in office and, and, and at any time there's always gonna be scandal, there's always gonna be controversy. But the idea behind my platform and why I appear as a legal analyst and a legal correspondent and discuss these issues is because I think we need to discuss them rigorously so that we can come up with solutions and make things better. And so that's what I encourage everybody I interact with to do is to whatever you can do from your space, whatever your job is, think of how you can make things better for the people around you. And, and you do that and too, and I appreciate you for that. So yeah. thank you so much for reaching out. It's been great. That's awesome. And for people to find you is um, the, 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 the not, not just another at, one. Sorry. At not just a lawyer, not just a lawyer on all what? social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. What is the message behind that? At not just a lawyer. What is that saying? Well, there's, there's more two than... messages, actually, because my firm tagline is that we're not just an a lawyer, we're your lawyers to our clients. And then for me personally, I'm not just a lawyer. I'm so many other things. I'm a legal analyst. I'm a mom. You know, I'm a community activist. I'm a speaker. I do so much more than just lawyer. So that's kind of what's behind the name. Well, I, I think I, I think that is awesome. And in 2018, one of the things I say is don't go with the flow and um, and go for gold, if anything like that, which okay. is very important, which I, I try to encourage persons about and to be that um, that voice, which is not apologetic, no matter what, yeah. uh, you know, and I think and I think at this time, especially for America, one of the things I say to Americans when I see what is happening over there, my message all the while is collaborate, get together. Um, get into office um, and kick some butts. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, um, nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong with demonstration. I'm like yourself. I'm not the type that demonstrate. I'm not the type that complain. I just find a strategic way of making things happen. And I believe that is something mm -hmm. that uh, persons, especially black persons, I mean, there's this economic empowerment movement going on in the UK as well with the transformation of the black pound. Um, want to create back Black Wall Street as well as possible. You know, I saw Colin Kaepernick um, raise a million pounds where he was 100,000 and getting all the different guys in to bet it. I say, that's fantastic. Let's take it from beyond just kneeling and do something more economical, you know? So that's great. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's great, Sue. That's awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you okay. so much for having me. Thank you. I, and yeah. I do have a London connection. I have a lot of family in London. So I don't know if any of them tuned in, but I'll say hi to any of them that yeah. did. Yeah, well, you can share the video as well and tell them to, and then we link them. I think I think a couple of persons were here as well. Um, one was, yeah, um, maybe a couple of your mates um, was on, online. Oh. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much, Sue, Ann, and have a wonderful day and enjoy um, your president. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy Brexit. I will enjoy Brexit as much as possible. <laughs> okay. Hopefully the See tectonic plates don't actually move and you actually exit. Hopefully that's just a political exit. It's a political exit. You can't lift up the UK and come out of Europe. I keep saying to persons all the time. I know, I know. And all, and all will happen is simply people will just be creating more, um, what should I say, opportunities. I guess listening to me, you, you realize maybe I'm a Brexit. I did vote in Brexit, I must say, <laughs> you know. Uh, Big, uh, and, and, and the whole aspect of Brexit again is that I always say this wherever there is uncharted territories, guess what you have after that? Tell me. 
If you have uncharted territories, what does it mean? What's Economic that? opportunity. Opportunities. Exactly. exactly. Bingo. Uncharted opportunities. So there are great things on the horizon. That's fantastic. What can I say? Mm -hmm. Change must come, as Sam Cook would right. say. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank so all the best. All the best. All the best. Thank you so much. Everybody. Bye, everyone. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. I do apologize sometimes for the sticking um, there, but that's technology. Um, one, one of the things that I, uh, a last thing I want to share was Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch wanted to, um, uh, what, what, what he did? Rupert Murdoch had a plan to buy out Sky, right? And as a result of buying out Sky, Rupert, the, the, the Broadcasting Commission in the UK actually blocked it. They blocked um, um, Sky. So, and then I read something, or I heard something, and what, what, what it said was this. It said this. They blocked it because Rupert Murdoch would be having so much effect on people's opinion. He'd be having so much effect on people's opinion. Can you imagine that? The media shape people's opinion. So it is very important that we test the news. I never forget a lawyer one time said to me, a judge actually said to me, test the evidence, Mr. Sidil. Test the evidence. No matter what it is, test it. And I think at this time in the world, people are so gullible to news. Fake news, alternative news, facts or whatever like that. But test it as much as possible. Test the news. And therefore, don't let it just shape your opinions just like that. You know what they said? If Rupert Murdoch got hold of Sky and with his empire present, he would have too much power in shaping opinions. Well, I guess what, what am I doing? Am I doing the same thing? I'm trying to shape opinion as well. That's what we're all doing at the same time, shaping opinions. But that means to say at the same time that it is important that we have our voices out there as well. So therefore, our voices are not just coming from one side. Therefore, everybody's lopsided. And it's the reason why I say you can't all just be a, a Democrat. You can't all just be a Republican. You can't just all be a PNP. You can't all just be a JLP. You can't just be a conservative. You can't all just be Democrats. Um, um, Labour. We've got to balance the books and be very strategic at, it, at the same time. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's my word today. And remember, as I always say, this is the year of going for gold. And you know when you go for gold or diamond, what you do, you dig. You dig, you dig, and you dig. And then what comes out is that pure, perfect, untouched. Can you imagine? Untouched, but was so deep down, that diamond, that gold, as much as possible. And remember, don't go with the flow. Yes. Um, and... Uh, and let me see if I can actually see some of the, the comments which are coming up before I go. Um, thank you guys for joining. The best thing that you said is that we must hold all politicians accountable and not just some. That is, that is, that is right, uh, Rupert. Um, best thing that you said that we must hold all politicians all accountable, not just some. Um, political persons, most, and they're elected everywhere in the world. Uh, many of these young girls were so vulnerable and trusted. This doctor did not come forward earlier to report issues of sexual abuse for fear of being labeled. Uh, Rupert Francis said 20,000 deportation, not 2,000, the highest ever. We need to stop politicking and focus on the issues. Yes, Trump has made us do one thing, come together, which is the best thing. Sometimes a bad thing might be better for us as a people. Um, um, talk about black social values. Do you think we need to improve that? Do you believe black families matter need to explore the black family? Do we believe that our people need to come together and prove their position, which I do think so? Do you believe that our culture has a responsibility to improve itself? And I think on that note, I'll leave whereby, do you believe that our culture, our people, has a responsibility to improve itself? That's a question out there. I believe we do have a responsibility directly indirectly because sometimes it is easy to apportion blame left right and center apportion blame but there's come to a point whereby you have to 
ladies and gentlemen, you have to come to that point where you take responsibility as to how you go forward. Take responsibility because guess what? Success is always there amidst the failure. The failure is when you ultimately give up. But success is when you keep going and going. Who determines success? Who is the ultimate master of the word success? That is subjective and relative to a certain extent. But failure is easy when you give up. But to fail once and to fail twice, that is not failure. Because guess what? It's a path towards success. It's a path because you learn some gem. I was listening to someone today and he said that if you're at a certain part in your age, 30, 40 or whatever like that, and you realize that you haven't achieved certain things, do that fact check. Do that check, that analysis. Go back over your life. See where you go wrong. See where you can make amends. And actually set your goals and actually decide for the next 40 years or the next 30 years or whatever to make it right. There's always time, but one has got to be real to themselves as much as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank so much for coming and for Sue and Oswell for joining from the States. And that was really good. And uh, we're looking for more collaboration um, from Jamaica, UK. Um, I've got my Zimbabwean connections already as much as possible, but we take it to the next level. And remember, don't go with the flow or you've been someone else's streams. Instead, create your own rivers. Remember, don't go with the flow or you've been someone else's streams. Instead, create your own rivers. That's one of my favorite quotes I want to give to you. And it's a, it's a beautiful quote, which if you take it, it's powerful and it revolutionizes your life. Okay, so thank you so much. And remember to subscribe to my show, uh, The Silburn Show, um, on YouTube, Silburn TV. Like my page as much as possible. Follow. We're on a journey. And we're not coming back. Okay, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And have a good evening. Bye-bye.